All right, hey guys. Pull up my chair, and what I got for you today is a video again with the Beretta 92FS. Now, what this video will address quickly is just the trigger pull on the Beretta. Real quick to show you no magazine in it, safety is on, and there's nothing in the chamber. It is completely empty and clean. So, now for the video, I'm going to keep the safety on and kind of mess with the trigger here now knowing that it is clean. When I first purchased this gun about eh, six months ago, the trigger pull was less than desirable. The issue was it was very gritty and had a lot of resistance um, the whole length of the pull and also about an eighth of an inch into the pull it would stop and then you'd have to apply a little more pressure and it would kind of snap and have a breaking point early until you get down to right about here where it would break again and fire. Now, I addressed that issue myself and did a little work to it. it took about an hour and I changed the gun completely as far as the trigger pull. Now this won't lighten your trigger pull, of course, but it will smooth it out. Um, you can take it to a gunsmith, spend a uh, hundred dollars or so and have them do trigger work and it'll probably turn out, you know, a little nicer, but this is something if you're kind of handy you can do it yourself with minimal money and uh, be pretty satisfied with it. Like again, if you have a stock Beretta and you haven't done much work to it or you just bought one, I highly recommend doing this or having somebody do it for you who's kind of handy. And I'm telling you now, I think you'll be impressed at the before and after of it. So, what we're going to do is take the slide off and we'll set it aside. Slides off, putting it aside right there. Next, what you're going to want to do is take out your grip screws and take your grip off. Easy enough, I already took my screws out to kind of ease the video along. I'm not the most fun person to watch or listen to for a long time, so I'll try to make this short and sweet just so you kind of get an idea what you're going to have to do. Now, what we're going to be doing is taking the trigger bar off. Now, there is a couple other videos on YouTube how to do that, so I won't go too in the depth and try to show you as well as I can with the light and the camera that I have. Um, but I do have a somewhat better camera now doing this video than my other video with the uh, grip screws. So and I think you'll like this one a little bit better. So basically to take the trigger bar off the first thing we're going to want to do is take off the trigger bar pin spring and that's easy enough basically it has a small hole right here where it goes down into and then a slot here and a groove up here on the trigger bar where it sits in so really to take it off I recommend just putting your thumb behind there to keep it from going away take a screwdriver just push down on it and that will release it from underneath there and you can kind of just pull it right out or it will fall down either way and we'll set that aside in a little parts cup now all you have to do to take the trigger bar off is just push it from behind just a little bit. Sometimes you got to move your trigger a little bit to make it easier. And it'll come right out. And there it is. Trigger bar is off. Now, one thing to pay attention to is that, I don't know this light will be necessary, but right back in here, there is a spring that goes in front on this side of this pin that helps the trigger return to its original position so when you pull this out you'll hear it the spring will snap back and go against this back wall right here that's fine we're gonna leave it there for right now you just need to make sure that you put it back on in the right spot which is could be can can be a pain but it's not too bad and I'll show you how I do it so and again there's other videos out there to do it too that may be better than mine but this is kinda just to show you the steps to get achieve that smoother trigger pull. <clears throat> now is this going to be the best? It can be, no, but something you can do yourself in an hour or two and definitely see a noticeable difference that you will do. So Now all I'm doing here is basically the reason you have a trigger pull that isn't you know as smooth as it can be. If you take this bar off, you fill this trigger it feels great just with the spring. The reason you get the grittiness and the resistance is all the friction 
of metal parts rubbing against each other. The grittier the parts are, the more resistance you're going to have, more friction, and the harder the pull will be. Now, all we're doing is just taking these metal parts and polishing them up so they can be as smooth as possible and in return you'll have a smoother trigger pull now frame you can do your frame okay you can do this spot right here where the trigger bar does rub on it but I haven't I'm not gonna do that right now I don't think it's necessary to get at least to where I was happy with it at so the only part of the frame I did do though was right here and the trigger bar is assembled and installed this part of it does rub against right here. Probably if you shot the gun enough and put a couple hundred rounds through it, when you take it off, you'll see that it's already been rubbed somewhat. But all you need to do is take yourself a piece of 1500 grit, 1500 grit sandpaper, and just smooth that area out. You don't want to go too aggressive, just roll light pressure until it starts to get shiny. Then just take a, a rag, wipe it off, and put a little bit of oil on it and that's it that part's done you can set your frame aside now you can do more work in the sear and on the hammer which I have done but for the video I'm just gonna do the trigger bar for now because I did that first before I did anything in here and it was uh, just as good I haven't really seen any noticeable differences doing the extra work I did in the frame here so Basically, all you're going to have to do is take your trigger bar and all the flat surfaces here, you're going to want to sand and polish. Now, for the trigger bar, I did start with um, 1000 grit sandpaper just to knock the material down a little more um, and kind of get the finish off a little faster. The same finish that was on that is on the front here, that brunition finish, was on the back here, and it's very rough. Um, it may feel smooth to you, but really, when you polish it, you'll feel the difference. So. Use 1,000, and then you're going to want to finish with, uh, with 1,500 sandpaper. <clears throat> now, the key to doing this is to get all the surfaces, being that there's some stuff in your way, can be a little hard to sand around it. So, you can go this direction when you're sanding, but I recommend when you're done, you're going to want to finish with all your lines in one direction go in the same direction in which the trigger bar moves. Okay, so start with your 1000 paper and smooth every flat surface out. Paying attention to this rolled area here, you want to get that good and these parts right here where it contacts the frame and the back here. In addition to that, you can do the pin that goes through the upper part of the trigger and this part of the pin. And again, just to do that, all you need to do is take a piece of paper, and you want to use light pressure, you don't want to do it too hard, and kind of just work it around. Just so the finish is off and it's nice and shiny and smooth. You don't have to go crazy. Once that finish, that finish is off and it's smooth and it feels good, you can stop right there, clean it up with a rag, and then put some oil on it. So Now when you're getting around this pin here, it is hard to take a piece of paper, and it does take some time to wear it down and get it where you want. One of my little tips that I use is I'll take a piece of sandpaper and I'll actually take a Q-tip and I'll use the Q-tip on top to give me my pressure and kind of use that to sand. It allows you to get a little bit closer, get your clumsy fingers out of the way and uh, let you get a little bit closer to the actual pin and sand and still keep even pressure on it. So that's a little tip to uh, make that area a little bit easier including the front here. Now this does take some time, but uh, I don't think you need to put anything more than an hour into it to uh, get it done. Now the other areas on the trigger bar besides the pin that I have done is right here. Now when you take your trigger bar out and you look at it, you're going to see some spots of it that have already been rubbed um, just from contacting other parts, moving parts in the gun and it starts to kind of smooth itself out and polish itself. So those areas you're going to want to kind of do and pay attention to now. On these parts you don't really need to use a thousand, you can just use fifteen hundred. And again this area right here, you can smooth that a little bit. And again you'll see the parts that have already been rubbed and those are the areas you want to do very lightly. You want to be very careful and just do them lightly. So I also did this area in here and then this area right here. 
Okay, so you can see that. That's all I did. Now, mine's pretty finished. It's not high polished. It's not as polished as, say, my barrel is or the grip screws that I did. So, you can make it like that if you take long enough. Now, this being the type of metal it is, it is kind of porous. Um, so, you may spend a lot of time if you want to get a mirror finish on it, but you can. The longer you sand, the better your results will be and the smoother it will be. But just to get it to look like this, it's a major improvement. So, really, uh, I'm not going to go much further with mine for the sake of the video to keep the time short. But uh, I just kind of wanted to show you real quick again how to smooth your trigger pull on a stock Beretta. Now, you can do all kinds of work to your trigger and uh, springs and buy spring kits, you know, like a wolf spring kit or something like that. But again, the purpose of this is just to show you an easy way, and sandpaper costs a few dollars, just with sandpaper and some hand tools an easy way to smooth the trigger pull on your Breta. And uh, with that, the smoother the pull is, the less resistance you have, the better trigger control you have, and turn will give you more accuracy. I went to the range and shot it the day I did it, and I just enjoyed the trigger a lot more. It was a lot easier to shoot. Um, I didn't have to fight the resistance or fight the uh, that initial break that it had. So be honest, I was really, really happy with the results of this minor uh, polishing work. So, again, I don't recommend using any uh, sanding blocks or anything like that. I would just use your hand, your finger, and you can keep even pressure on it. And kind of keep your finger flat, and you can work it back and forth. And uh, really smooth it out a lot. So, after you're done, just take it, make sure you get all the sanding material off of it, and the uh, material that you sand it off wipe it down real good and then coat some light oil. Now what I use, which you don't have to use, this is an advertisement, but I did use Corrosion X in the aerosol and in the uh, tube or the bottle I should say. So what this has in it, just like Rambo oil, is Teflon. What the Teflon does is it kind of puts a light film coating on it and it kind of uh, bonds to the metal and stays there. So. I use a real little bit of that, and it also kind of cleans it up a little better too. And I'll just coat this whole trigger bar assembly real easily, real lightly, again real sparingly, and uh, that'll kind of smooth everything out too for you and give you less friction. You know, everybody knows Teflon's main uh, use is to reduce friction, so. That added with the polishing really, really makes the trigger a lot nicer, and you'll see that. So that's that. So spend your time on it, take your time, make it look nice. Uh, well, I should say, don't make it look. Uh, it's not for a beauty contest as far as going is, you know, attractive to the eye because you're not going to see it. Um, but you just want to get it nice and smooth. And again, if you can see that, it's not polished to a mirror, but it just is smoothed out a lot so what we'll do real quick is I'm going to try to show you my way of putting the trigger bar back in if it helps you and you can do it that way I'm I'm, uh, I'm not quite the best person to show this because it is hard to use work backwards uh, and be able to show you on camera as best I can to do it there is a couple other videos if you just search Beretta 92 trigger bar install or removal a couple good videos will come up so uh, let me just quite, you know, quickly show you how I do it. So, all you have to do is take your trigger bar and set it in the trigger again. Now, you don't want to put it in all the way; just kind of get it started, and that's it. And you want to want to keep your finger here just to hold it. So, you just want to keep it so it's not going through. Actually, not going through because you're going to want to pull that spring back that spring back and then as soon as that springs back you can push it in all the way so I'll just get it started to where it needs to be kind of show you how I do it okay now all you need to do is you want to push the trigger down and then I usually use an allen key I'm not sure this is the right one I'm pretty sure it is Okay, it is the right one. So, 
you're going to want to use this hand to move the trigger with your thumb and push in. Like I said, it is kind of cumbersome, but it's not. Once you do it 10 or 15 times, it's not too bad, so. Okay. Got it where I want it. Now, again, push the trigger in all the way down, and that'll bring this forward and kind of put this. I use an Allen key, it fits right in there. Put that behind the spring, and then pull back on the spring. And then, as soon as you got the spring back, push it in and let go of the spring. And there you go, your trigger returns to what it, where it needs to be. Now, to get this in, that's it. It just kind of sits right in there. If you had your hammer back, you'd have to kind of push this forward and work it. And so I recommend keeping the hammer forward when you do this. Don't have it cocked back. It makes it a lot harder. So now that you can see that pin right there does have that spring right behind it. So the spring has to be over. And if it's still back here, you missed it, do it again. But again, it's real easy. You just kind of use this hand or one hand to hold it right in place there and pull down on the trigger which gives you easier access to that spring use the flat sided part of the allen key pull back on that spring and then just as soon as you got the spring back enough and you're clear of the hole push that pin in and you can let it go and that's it so now after that we have to put the other spring back in to finish it off so this spring again not too hard to put in it's pretty easy what you want to do is there's a hole here start with the hole and put that in there now once you get that in kind of just push up and kind of push that spring into that space there's a space again right in here a slot where that'll go into it so once that's in there all you have to kind of do is I put my thumb behind there to keep it from going too far just kind of push down on that spring and you hear it click and it'll go right up into its spot and that's it trigger bars back in now don't be alarmed like I said there's that initial break right there you can feel it but until the slides back on you really won't see the difference so what we'll do without the grip I'll put the spring the slide back on real quick and it feels really good like I said I know from mine when I bought it and it was brand new it was horrible definitely feels a lot better so hopefully you get the same results and you're, uh, you're happy with the results now what I will do real quick is just grab a casing Now I know a lot of people have uh, snap caps and stuff like that. I don't have any laying around today, so what I do is you can't do this a lot. I don't do it a lot. I just do it a few times. I'll put a spent casing in. Primer's already been striked, so no worries about that. And I'll put it in, and I'll cock the hammer back. And I'll kind of test it out, and from here to there. I don't feel any resistance um, minus the spring resistance, but I don't feel anything that's, it's all uniform and it's all just smooth, it's like glass almost. When you do this rocking uh, motion on it, you don't feel the grittiness that you probably used to feel, so we'll take it and then a little pressure, light pressure, keep giving pressure and it breaks, so that works real well. Like I said, I was real excited after I did it. Because I couldn't believe the difference that it made. So, hopefully, uh, hopefully this helps some people out there. Like I said, I always take for granted that people just know what they're doing or try this stuff themselves. I was kind of afraid at first when I started messing around with my guns. And when I say messing around with, you have to use extreme caution and go very slowly. Once you take too much off of material or go too far, you're gonna have to buy a part and you know start again. So, but just to polish this, it's really easy to do. I you know. Just take the trigger bar out, it's as easy as I showed you, and polish all the flat surfaces, and then uh, that one spot on the frame that I showed you, because you can see right here, it does rub that one spot on the frame, so it's as easy as that. Now, if you have any questions or comments or any tips for me that might help me out, 
to kind of get it better if you know more than I do, which could be possible. Uh, let me hear them. I'm always up to new ideas. So, uh, all right, guys, have fun shooting, and I hopefully you'll enjoy your trigger once you're done. Take it easy.